Hello students. I hope all of you are well. All of you are fine. Today I will be explaining to you the first chapter of a prescribed textbook, Flamingo. Very interestingly and ironically, the first chapter of your book is by the name, The Last Lesson. This has been written by the French novelist Alphonse Tade. The story is set in the days of Franco-Prussian War when Prussia under the leadership of Bismarck defeated France. We see how Germany, just because it was victorious over France, imposed its rule over France without having a least bit of any idea uh, what the French might think about that rule. The story speaks about how you understand the value of something when you lose that thing. Like here, the people of those two towns, namely Alsace and Lorraine, feel when their region, uh, when their language, their culture has been snatched away by Germany. We see here, as a result of it, uh, its victory over France, Germany annexed two uh, regions of France, that is Alsace and Lorraine. Not only this, it imposed a rule that only, uh, only German would be taught in the schools, not French. For that, new German teacher would arrive. This rule made the people, the villagers, realize the importance of their mother tongue, the importance of their education, and also their teacher, M. Heng. The story has been narrated by a small child, namely France. When the story begins. We see France in great dread of his school. He is hurrying towards school because he is already late. The day outside is very, very bright and warm. The birds chirping, the Prussian soldiers drilling uh, behind the sawmill. But then uh, he has the courage. To resist that temptation and head towards his school. Even though he was very afraid to go to school because that day his teacher M. Hamel had uh, told that he would be taking a test on the rules of participles and France did not know a single word about those rules. So he resisted the temptation to stay outside and he headed towards his school. When he uh, uh, crossed the town hall, he saw that there was a great crowd in front of the bulletin board. Students, now we have different technologies to get news. We have um, we have television, we have social websites, we have newspapers, we have so many things. But in that year, 1870, which I'm speaking about, which is where the story is set, there was no such technological uh, advanced means of uh, uh, communication. So this bulletin board had been the source of information for all the people. 
But since last two years, this bulletin board had uh, imparted only sorrowful bad news. Like when the French lost their battle, when the new commandments came, when the rule came that as a result, uh, these, two, uh, play, these two villages called Alsace and Lorraine would be handed over to Germany. These informations, these, this, uh, these news had come. So France thought, what could be the matter now? But still, <clears throat> he went ahead. He also had to ignore what the blacksmith of the village watcher said. He said that don't hurry. You would reach your school in plenty of time. Franz in fact thought that the blacksmith was making fun of him. So very fast he headed towards his school. He had thought that he would enter inside the school and nobody would not notice his uh, entrance, his arrival because everybody would be talking every, everywhere. There would be noise, there would be commotion. Usually this happens when our, uh, when our school begins. You all remember, you all can relate to it. When you reach, uh, when uh, we have zero period, how much uh, or before attendance, how much you, uh, you keep on talking. So he had thought that the students would be in this mode only and he would very easily enter the classroom without being noticed. But contrary to his expectations, there was no noise, no commotion. It was all so quiet as if it was Sunday. And he had to ask permission, to seek permission from his teacher M. Hamel in front of everyone. But he was greatly surprised when the teacher M. Hamel was not angry. In fact, in a very calm and composed tone, he asked him to come inside. And he told uh, that he, uh, uh, he had come in right time because he was going to start without him. When Franz, uh, you know, noticed his teacher, he saw that he was wearing his special dress, his green coat, his frilled shirt, his black silk cap, which he always wore on prize or inspection days. Franz had no idea, no clue what, what, what was happening. And then he sat. Only then he realized that on the back benches, which were always vacant, some villagers, some old villagers, some old uh, citizens of Alsace were sitting. Old Hauser, uh, mayor, postman, they were sitting. So it was com something, it was completely strange for him. It was completely unusual for him. Then, in a serious tone, M. Hamel started and he told about the new rule imposed by the Germans. He told the, um, uh, those students sitting there that there was a new rule, there had been a new rule that only German would be taught in the schools, no French. A new German teacher would be arriving the next day and he would no longer be teaching there. And these words of M. Hamel were like a thunderclap for France. He had never expected, expected this. Till now, he had disliked his school. School books were like burden for him. He disliked his teacher. He thought that he was very cranky. He was uh, very strict. And all of a sudden, his whole approach changed. 
The school books became his old friends, which he could never part with. He started loving his teacher. He felt guilty that till now he had not learned anything uh, of French. Franz now understood why his teacher was wearing his special dress. He now understood why the old villagers were sitting on back benches. It was to show respect to their language, which was not go which was going to be taught uh, no more from the next day. The villagers also wanted to thank um, M. Hamel and his selfless service. While Franz was thinking about all these things, his turn came to recite the rules of participles. He stood up and he would have given anything in this world to be able to speak these rules of participles clearly without any mistake. But alas, he couldn't. But his teacher was not angry on him. In fact, he told him calmly, Sit down, friends. It's not your fault. You, all, uh, you must always be, all, uh, you must already be feeling your guilt. We, uh, he said that all of them had something to reproach. He said that students like Franz put their study always on the next day. And this attitude had brought, brought, has brought them now nowhere. Now, next day, the Germans would, be, would uh, come and uh, ask them, why? You say that you're French and you don't know anything of it. M. Hamel said the parents that the parents were also to blame because they sent their children, they preferred to send their children to farms or at mills so that they could earn some extra money rather than sending them to schools. Last but not the least, M. Hamel blamed himself too. He said that whenever he wanted to go for fishing, he gave holiday to students. And he also sent the students to water his plants. And in this way, he explained that each one of them was responsible for this condition. He went, he uh, went, he proceeded and said that French is the most logical, the most beautiful language of this world. And by these sentences, we know how much M. Hamel loves his language. We see the flicker of patriotism in, his, in him. And he wants to imbibe this patriotism, this feeling into his students. He says that as long as we hold fast to one's language, to our language, it is as if uh, we have our key to freedom. Our culture, our language, our tradition, everything, they are our key to freedom. And... Franz was already feeling very guilty that he had uh, uh, neglected, he had ignored his studies uh, till that time. So students, this is all for today. In the next video, I will be continuing the same chapter. Uh, I would like to, uh, I would like all of you to do a writing task uh, uh, based on whatever I have taught now. You have to write in uh, nearly 120 words about the 
uh, effect which the new rule of Germans have brought on France. Okay, so this is all for now. Thank you. Goodbye.